My name's David Wood. I believe in the abolition of aging. I start off from the point of view that life is good. I want everybody to have the choice whether to die or not, rather than that being imposed on us by the weakness of our body. Abolishing aging is science fiction. Death is a natural part of life. It is one of only two experiences that we all have in common as human beings. Having to die is a price worth paying for being alive. Would I want to live forever? Yes, I would. The idea of immortality goes back thousands of years. I mean, the people that built the pyramids uh, were, were commissioned by uh, pharaohs who really wanted to live forever. They thought of themselves as gods and they enjoyed their power, presumably, and they didn't uh, envisage losing that power just by dying, which was obviously, they thought of it as a major inconvenience. So they wanted to live forever. Lots of uh, rich people want to live forever. Lots of powerful people want to live forever. A lot of ordinary people who just really enjoy life want to live forever. To live forever would be a really empowering and beautiful thing to take the mistakes that we've made in the past and try and stop people from making them again in the future. I think I would have to because it would be like too much of an amazing opportunity to miss but I don't think I'd like enjoy it. I think it'd be a bit overwhelming but I feel like I'd have to say yes. Yes, I'd like to have a nice, long, health, healthy life but it would be nice to be able to say, right, I've been here long enough, it's time to go. It is a very common understanding that death is a bad thing, and some people even think it's the greatest evil. And if you don't want to die, then the alternative is living forever. I'm not sure I want to live forever, because after all, forever is a very long time. I do know that I'm not in any hurry to grow old and weak and feeble. I'm not in any hurry for my loved ones to grow old and weak and feeble. I want the freedom for each person to be able to decide I want to keep on living, or in some cases, perhaps some people will say there's nothing more for them to do. They can then deanimate. What many people don't realize is that there are many animals and birds in nature which don't actually grow old. Of course, they get older in terms of birthdays, but they don't get older in terms of being increasingly ill, increasingly likely to die. For example, there are some birds, there's a famous albatross called Wisdom that was first noticed, had a ring put on her foot back in, I think, 1955. She's now 67 years old. She isn't showing any sign of aging. And remarkably, she has a new egg and a healthy chick every year. What scientists are trying to do who are interested in extending healthy longevity is first of all, understanding some of nature's techniques and copying them more into humans as well. Another option is that we can do 3D printing of human organs so that instead of somebody whose heart is weak or their lungs are weak, having to wait for the tragedy of somebody else dying and then we can repurpose their heart or their lungs, in the not too distant future, we'll be able to print using people's own cells, a new heart or new lungs. My favourite way of extending life would be to use electronics to do that. So we put electronics inside your brain using nanotechnology devices which are linked to every synapse and we make a replica, essentially, of your brain inside the machine world, inside the cloud. So when your body dies of old age or you get hit by a truck or disease, it isn't a big problem, you know, you can just uh, buy an Android, upload your mind into that and carry on as if nothing had happened. So death isn't a major career problem. It's a bit like how we look after our old motor vehicles. You know, there are some motor vehicles driving around on the streets of Britain, which are 100 years old. They were never designed to last 100 years, but loving owners kept on refurbishing them and cleaning them and, uh, where necessary, doing repairs. Well, we can do the same thing to the human bodies. And there's no reason at all why we couldn't be as healthy and fit at the age of 100 as we are at the age of 30. Most of us are programmed with the idea that we're going to die when we're 70, 80, 90 or 100. Uh, we're quite comfortable with that and it's, it's actually quite alien thinking that you might live a lot longer than that. There is certainly something about knowing that your life is going to come to an end that helps you make the most of the time that you have. If you know something's going to last a day, 
there's a time frame there which helps you make the most of that day. There are some people who think that without the prospect of death, life somehow becomes meaningless. But you know, I look at young children. They are full of joy of life. They bounce out of bed in the morning. They want to get together and play games. They're not doing that because they think that in the future they're going to die. They are living for the sake of life. They are not living for the sake of death. And it's in my view, we're quite capable of finding lots of purpose in life, even if there is no threat of death ahead. Well, there's nothing unethical about wanting to live forever, although it's slightly selfish because you, you attach a lot of importance to your own existence. Um, and of course, there would be consequences from you living forever, or at least if everyone would live forever. There are some good arguments people can raise as to why there are questions about uh, indefinite lifespans. One argument is that the earth will become full up. We are already overpopulated and if people no longer die then the population will grow too quickly. I actually think there's enough space on this earth for many more people than already live. I've done some calculations. There's scope for probably a hundred billion people to live on this earth. Not as we're doing today, but in a better, more harmonious relationship. Part of that is new types of food. Part of it is new types of building in which we have beautiful, ecologically harmonious uh, skyscrapers. In due course, not in a hurry, but in due course, we might even live in space. After all, the Earth's a very small part of this universe. Having to die is a price worth paying for being alive for a certain time and I enjoy being alive and precisely because I do I think death is something that can be accepted and should be accepted. I can understand that some people are initially skeptical about these claims. After all, for most of history many people were looking for what was called an elixir of life and none was ever found and in fact the people who searched for it often ended up killing themselves in the in the process. For example, the first emperor of China, he was obsessed by wanting to live forever, but some of the potions he took probably included mercury or lead in quantities that led him to die earlier. So all of history seems to suggest we can't do it. But then you've got to look more deeply. First of all, there are other things which for history seemed to be impossible, and then gradually we figured out how to do it. The future is coming faster than it used to be. When I was young, the future was something that might be happening to people's grandchildren. It might be something in Star Trek in the 23rd century. But actually, the pace of change has increased so much. People's experiences, how people work and live and play, how people find their intimate partners, how people find their next employment, all of that is changing rapidly. And we need to think in advance about the consequences. And it's the point of transhumanists to say, Wake up everybody, this possibility is now within our grasp. Let's focus some of society's research onto that. Let's stop researching how to make people click on ads online. Let's have more of that intelligence instead applied on accelerating rejuvenation biotechnology. If we do that, everybody will benefit. Everybody will have the ability to live much healthier and as long as they wish. There is no upper limit to what life can bring. And that's why I think let each person be able to choose. If they want to keep on living, then that's their right.